Well, new on AM Extra, today is World Ovarian Cancer Day, an effort to raise awareness about one of the most deadly cancers prevalent among women. Experts say about one in 78 women will get ovarian cancer, and in many cases, it's diagnosed at later stages. Joining us live to talk more about it is ovarian cancer survivor. We have Anna Demers, the board president for Ovarian Cancer Alliance of Oregon and Southwest Washington. Also joined by Dr. Julia, Julia Feniger, a gynecologic oncologist at Legacy Health. Thank you both for being here. That's a great pronunciation. Oh, man, it just, it just, I practiced. I practiced before we, we came on the air. Um, well, doctor, I do want to talk about, obviously, just what ovarian cancer is. I know that sounds like a really obvious question, but what is ovarian cancer? So ovarian cancer is actually cancer that starts in one of three places, which is a little bit confusing. So either the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, or the lining of the abdomen. And because the ovaries are small and kind of hidden in a woman's pelvis, it's not uncommon for patients to have their cancer spread throughout their abdomen before it's diagnosed. Mm, that's interesting. Anna, as, a, as an ovarian cancer survivor yourself, tell us a little bit about some of the, the signs, the symptoms, maybe things that um, I'm sure a, a lot of women would think, gosh, I, I would have missed that, or they could have been so many different things. Well, thank you for asking that yeah. question because um, the symptoms and signs of ovarian cancer are very innocuous. They're things like pelvic pain, bloating, so ha all of us have had those things. Right. Um, uh, frequent urination, um, uh, you take a bite of food and you're suddenly full. Mm. So, um, you know, those th kinds of things are um, very innocuous yeah. and um, uh, the, uh, with ovarian cancer, um, it, when the, those kinds of symptoms come and stay um, more than once, longer than uh, a couple of weeks, that's when you need to find a gynecologic oncologist or go see your doctor mm -hmm. and, and talk to your doctor and say, you know, this is not normal for right. me. Right. Is that really the only way to, to find it early is to go to the doctor? Because when those symptoms are maybe feelings that you're used to feeling. Right. I mean, you what know? woman hasn't had pelvic pain or bloating at some point? Oh, right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. We don't have uh, a diagnostic tool. A pap smear only detects cervical cancer. There is no diagnostic tool or test. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Finneger, let's talk a little bit about uh, just the importance then of checking in with your doctor because how is the prognosis different if you're able to detect this early? That's a great question. So for patients that are diagnosed with early stage disease, so where it's limited to the ovary or to the pelvis, they generally have a much better prognosis than people who are diagnosed at later stages. And so I think it's important to know your body, mm -hmm. know what's normal for you, and I think to advocate for yourself. So if something doesn't feel right, then reaching out to your doctor or um, sort of accessing care. And if you don't feel like you're getting the answers that you need, then kind of speaking up further and continuing to be an advocate. Because yeah. unfortunately, there isn't a good screening test. And so we rely on kind of hopefully diagnosing it um, when it is at an early stage. Mm -hmm. And I think the other big part of it is is that about 15 to 20 percent of women who have ovarian cancer actually have a genetic mutation that they inherited mm -hmm. from their from you know one of the sides of their family um, that significantly increases their risk and they can decrease their risk by having surgery to remove their tubes and ovaries after they've completed childbearing and so knowing about your family history is also really really important. So where does genetic testing get involved then with that conversation in mind? That's a that's a wonderful question. Yeah. I don't know, do you want to speak to that or? I'll let you talk to genetic <laughs> testing and I'll t I can talk about well, my family history. Uh, yeah. Well, my, my family history is such that um, I had an aunt with breast cancer, a sister with uterine cancer, my dad had um, metastatic prostate cancer, and my grandfather had colon cancer. Wow. I had no idea that that put me at risk for ovarian cancer. Yeah. And once I had ovarian cancer, I had um, genetic testing. I didn't have any mutations at all. Mm. Um, however, it, when you have um, genetic testing, which uh, is fairly easy to have, um, uh, done either by a blood test or a cheek swab, um, you know, BRCA testing, BRCA mutation is uh, about one in 400 in um, the general population, if you're mm -hmm. of Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jewish population, mm -hmm. it's about one in 40. Wow. So, 
Yep. It's interesting, Dr. Finnegar, I hear from uh, people a lot of times when, you know, genetic testing and, and mm -hmm. some of those family history mm -hmm. conversations come up. It's so easy to want to say ignorance is bliss, right? I kind of just, you, you, it's so easy with medical stuff to want to bury your head in the right. sand. But mm -hmm. uh, why is that knowledge so important? I mean, not just for you, but for other members of your family. So I think it's, I mean, right. ultimately right. it should be empowering. And right. I know yeah. it's scary, um, but you know, accessing those so services and getting that information is important. Mm -hmm. um, for ovarian cancer patients, there are actually medications that they can uniquely benefit from mm. if they have genetic mutations. Mm -hmm. Um, and for themselves and their families, they can decrease the risk of developing other cancers. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of patients who have found out that they have had these mutations and their, their daughters and their granddaughters mm -hmm. and they've been able to avoid having cancer at all. Yeah. Wow. Really yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, yep. I do want to make sure we talk about the second annual Teal Ribbon <laughs> Family Fun Walk that's coming up. That's to raise ovarian cancer yep. symptom awareness. What can people know about that? Well, thank you for asking yeah. that one too. We, um, so June 22nd at the beautiful Oregon Zoo, um, we will uh, walk a mile and a half around the zoo. It's a chance for survivors, friends, family, our medical community to come together to amplify um, knowledge about uh, ovarian cancer mm -hmm. to, um, because as we've talked about this morning, um, knowledge is power. Yeah. Uh, and with that knowledge, we can um, uh, perhaps stave off some um, late diagnoses with ovarian cancer. Absolutely. Um, and so. And connect to find the, the resources and exactly. support mm -hmm. you know, exactly. for folks here in right. town too. Having conversation is so important. It Something is, Something that, uh, that the Ovarian Cancer Alliance of Oregon and Southwest Washington does really well. Thank you. On Yes. Uh, Dr. Finnegar, thank you for being here. Thank we you. really thank appreciate you. you talking about a really important topic. And if you want to learn more, you can see uh, more from this interview, some of our resources. We'll share that on coin.com. And mark your calendars for the second annual Teal Ribbon Family Fun Walk coming up in June. All the info you need is going to be on the website. 725.